Question 1 from Section 1 of the 2019 National 5 Physics Examination. Which of the following are both vector quantities? And we're given five pairs of quantities and we decide which one contains two vectors. OK, quick revision first of all. A vector quantity must be described with its magnitude, size, and its direction. A scalar quantity. Well, that's a quantity that can be described by its magnitude, its size only, and you don't need to bother about direction. So to help us, we're going to employ our quantity vortexes over here. Now, if I place the correct quantity into the correct vortex, the scalar vortex or the ver vector vortex, and it's sucked in, then it'll be correct. So let's go. Help us sort out which are vectors and which are scalars. OK, let's begin with kinetic energy. Well, kinetic energy doesn't really need a direction to describe it fully. It just needs a number, a, a magnitude. So we would say that kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. And that's correct. It sinks into the scalar quantity vortex. Now, mass, likewise, only needs a number to describe it. It doesn't need a direction. So mass, then, should fit into the scalar quantity vortex. Correct. Mass is a scalar quantity. Now, what about force? A force is a push or a pull or a shove or a twist. And really, we need to know the direction of the push or the shove or the pull or the twist. So force, we'll call that a vector quantity. Correct. It needs size and it needs direction. Now, weight is a, mem is a member of the forces family, so weight should be a vector quantity as well. It needs a size and a direction. Correct. Now, these two here, speed and acceleration. Now, let's look at acceleration and let's take a guess and think, well, OK, it could be a scalar quantity. No, acceleration is not a scalar quantity because acceleration depends on force and force is a vector quantity. So acceleration will need a direction to describe it fully as well. So that's a vector quantity. What about speed? Speed, well, it could be a vector quantity. No, it's not, because speed needs only a number to describe it. If you've got a 30 mile per hour speed limit, you could be going south on that road or north on that road. It doesn't depend on a direction. So speed just needs a number. It's a scalar quantity. So, that's all our scalar quantities and vector quantities sorted out. All we have to do is match them up into our questions. So, we'll colour code it. We will have yellow for the scalar quantities and we'll have green for the vector quantities. OK, let's begin then with the scalar quantities in these questions. So, kinetic energy, we'll mark that one out. Kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. And mass is a scalar quantity. So is speed. So we can drop out speed and speed there. And we have all the scalar quantities highlighted. Now let's go for the vector quantities. Weight is a vector quantity. And so is acceleration. So there you go. We've got our answer, 1A. Just to complete the question, we can also fill in acceleration here, and acceleration here, and acceleration here, and force the vector quantity. But as you can see from the diagram, we have only got question 1A correct, because that's the one that contains weight and acceleration, which are both vectors. Question 2 from section 1 of the 2019 National 5 Physics Examination. A car is travelling at 6.0 metres per second along a straight level road. The car then accelerates uniformly at 2.0 metres per second every second for 4.0 seconds. And you're asked to find the final speed of the car. Well, when we say accelerates uniformly, we simply mean that acceleration stays the same at 2.0 metres per second every second. Now remember, 2 metres per second every second means, it means every second it's going to increase its speed by 2 metres per second. Now go to your relationship sheet and you can have the basic equation there. V, the final speed, equals U, the initial speed, plus acceleration times the time. We're asked to find the final speed, so it's just a simple case of putting in the numbers, and that's what we'll do now. So V is equal to initial speed, which was 6 Point zero. I'll leave out the units, 
plus the acceleration times the time. We'll put that in brackets. Acceleration was 2.0 and the time accelerated for was 4.0 seconds. So we do that in our calculator. We get 6.0 plus 8.0 and therefore we're going to get a value of 14 metres per second. So the final speed of the car will be 14 metres per second, which will be answer B. Question 3 from section 1 of the 2019 National 5 examination. The graph shows how the speed V of a car varies with time T. During which part of the journey does the car have the greatest acceleration? Now the key factor here, the key thing we've got to remember in this question is the following. Is that the gradient of a speed time graph equals the acceleration. So we can compare the gradients of this graph then we can work out the steepest gradient and that will be the biggest acceleration, the greatest acceleration. And to do that we need to use our ruler. So bring the ruler over and look at the first part of the journey and it's from O to P. So the velocity is changing, it is a gradient and it's accelerating. Now the journey from P to Q you can see is flat which means during that part of the journey it's got no acceleration. Let's look at Q. Now the gradient of Q as you can see here is less than the gradient of O to P. So so far OP is the biggest acceleration so far. But from R to S we have got another flat line which means no acceleration. And this small part in here from S to T you can see that the line has got, in fact, a bigger gradient than the whole of the graph. So, S to T has got the biggest gradient, therefore it will have the biggest acceleration. So the answer to that question will be 3E.